Good morning. The friends and families of Holy Trinity Catholic Parish, thank you for joining us today for the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. The Holy Sacrifice of the Mass can be viewed via live stream on the parish's Facebook page and heard each Sunday on KVFD 1400 at 8.30 a.m. Welcome to this celebration of the Mass of the Sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. The opening hymn this morning is hymn number 604, Praise the Lord, you heavens adore him. Hymn number 604, we will be singing verses 1 and 3. Please rise. spoken, worlds his mighty voice obeyed. Laws it will ever shall be broken, for their guidance he has made. Worship, honor, glory, blessing, Glad thanksgiving, Lord, we bring. Young and old, your praise expressing in the joyful hymns we sing. All the saints in heaven adore you, we would bow. As your angels serve before you, so on earth your will be done. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sending of the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Thanks for your great glory, our God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the most 
Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustula or balach, which appears to be the sort of leprosy, he shall, not be, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as a sore is on him, he shall to declare himself unclean since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. I turn to you, O Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, O Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is remitted. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit is no guile. I turn to you, O Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. To you I have acknowledged my sin, my guilt I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord, and you have forgotten the guilt of my sin. <clears throat> I turn to you, O Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Rejoice in the Lord, exalt you just, 
Ring out your joy, all you upright of heart. I turn to you, O Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved be imitators of me as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. prophet has risen in our midst. God has visited his people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priests, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's reading from Leviticus, that first reading from the Old Testament, as well as the Gospel, present us, well, with a picture of Israel's efforts to protect the very well-being of the community in the face of what is a debilitating disease, leprosy. 
Leprosy, well, it disfigures human flesh. And thankfully, well, it's probably a reality that no one of us has ever experienced firsthand. Still, intellectually, we can appreciate how this disease would have frightened people. And indeed, well, it would have threatened their own sense of well-being. The disease impacts the infected person well in two ways. First, of course, it impacts that individual's personal health. But as well, in the second sense, that disease, well, put the leprous person outside of the community. And as such, a daily living became, well, even more difficult for such a person. Still, in each encounter with leprosy in the scriptures, well, it exhibits that the leper is one who is unwelcomed in the community. He becomes an outcast. But if you think about it, before becoming an outcast, this leper may well have been a very influential member of the community. The misfortune of the disease, of course, expels him. However, from the very network within which, well, he was accustomed to have previously made a living and found truly a whole sense of belonging. How he contracted the disease, well, we'll never know. Nevertheless, understandably, what the leper longs for is not only to be cured, but truly to be restored to the community. And yet to realize these longings, the leper has to do something. He has to show some initiative. So in his need, he reaches out. And in fact, he takes a risk and violates the Levitical law as he approaches Jesus. Now, in curing the leper, Jesus, of course, turns that hope of the leper into a reality. That man is cured, meaning, again, he can re-engage in the life that he was once, well, accustomed to. Now he is healed and whole. Still, the leper's life, well, it will never be the same, because now he has encountered Jesus. He has known mercy and grace in the face of what was his suffering and despair. The man will not forget his time of exile, of being outside of the community. And again, he had once experienced that community as very life-giving. And now healed, of course, he possesses a whole new appreciation of the renewed life-giving relationship with God and indeed his fellow believers. Now the scriptures this week invite us to reflect upon the figurative incidents of leprosy that exist in our own lives. Every one of us probably can identify relationships that have been injured by an insensitive word or action for which, well, we may have been responsible. It might be a personal relationship of a friendship. It might be a relationship with a colleague or a co-worker. It might be our relationship with the Lord Jesus. Whatever the situation might be, the gospel reminds us that these relationships, well, they can be healed, but it requires initiative on our part. The initiative, well, it may start with an apology or a thank you. It might involve a sincere examination before the mirror of one's own conscience and the celebration of sacramental reconciliation. Whatever the case may be, 
it is only in taking, well, some personal risk and initiative that our relationships with God and with others can be rightly restored or, in fact, better maintained. Like the leper, once healed, our relationships will never be the same. They will be greatly improved because they will have known the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ. As we approach the beginning of Lent now with this Ash Wednesday of this week, perhaps we might resolve, well, to reflect upon any quote-unquote leprosy that may be impacting our lives, relationships, and seek the healing hand of the Lord Jesus as we reach out in our need to find that grace which restores us to wholeness and right relationships with all around us. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, to him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> We turn to God in prayer, trusting that he knows our hearts. For our holy church and her mission to build the kingdom of God in our midst, may God continue to uphold us in the sacred work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For world leaders, may the Prince of Peace guide them in their work for justice, peace, and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are outcasts in our society or feel alienated from others, may the Lord's enduring love embrace them in their vulnerability. Let us pray to the Lord. For the members of this faith community, may the sacramental graces we have received come alive in our every word and deed. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Ruth von Draska, and for the intention of this Mass, Kay Yetmar, Ray Barber, Dan Lichwick, Judy Ewing Hugel, let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers we hold silently in our hearts.
Let us pray to the Lord. God our Father, we beg you for an angry Our song of preparation is hymn number 965, Healer of Every Ill, hymn number 965. and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us, the Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and ever <clears throat> the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Save us, Savior of the world For by your cross and resurrection You have set us free Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, <clears throat> we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of 
of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, the only one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. They ate and had their fill, and what they craved, the Lord gave them. They were not disappointed in what they craved. Give ear, my people, to my teaching. Incline your ear to the words of my mouth. They ate and had their fill, and what they craved, the Lord gave them. They were not disappointed in what they craved. The things we have heard and understood, the things our fathers have told us, these will we will not hide from their children, but will tell them to the next generation. The glories of the Lord and His might and the marvelous deeds he has done. They ate and had their fill, and what they craved, the Lord gave them. They were not disappointed 
in what they craved. Yet he commanded the clouds above and opened the gates of heaven. He rained down manna to eat and gave them bread from heaven. They ate and had their fill and what they craved the Lord gave them. They were not disappointed in what they craved. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end, Amen. They ate and had their fill, and what they craved, the Lord gave them. They were not disappointed in what they craved. Our communion song is hymn number 950, I Am the Bread of Life, hymn number 950. Day. 
Yes, Lord, we believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. There are a couple of announcements. The uh, first being is that the men's ministry will be doing Exodus 90 during the 40 days of Lent. There will be an informational meeting for all men of the parish on Tuesday evening this week here in the conference room at 6 p.m. Also, Ash Wednesday is this week, the beginning of Lent. Mass times are in the bulletin as well as posted on our social media sites. Remember that it is a day of fasting for all those ages 18 to 59 years old, as well as a day of abstinence from meat for everyone 14 years and older. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is hymn number 611. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Hymn number 611. We will be singing verses 1 and 4.
Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before you, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. Mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. God's own love is reigning o'er us, joining people hand in hand. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us sunward in the triumph song of life.